Rock and roll, ladies and gentlemen. Rich yeah. of Sounds Animals Fighting. Yeah, hell yeah! <laughs> I gotta intro you properly. You know that. All right, out of the gate, you've already won best intro award. Excellent, excellent. We for strive for these. Time. We strive for these, dude. Uh, you're an absolute legend. I appreciate you taking some time for doing this. Uh, for those that somehow may not know who you are, Rich, could you please properly introduce yourself? Let me know whereabouts in the world you are. Plug or promote anything you'd like. Yeah, well, I'm Rich Balling. I'm currently in a band called The Sound of Animals Fighting, which has been playing since 2004, and we're about to go on tour celebrating our first release in almost 15 years. I also kicked off a solo project this year called Hospital Gown, and that that has been taking up a lot of my time and energy. But I'm currently in Dallas. Uh, I'm a California transplant. I was in Southern California, born and raised Till I was about 28. What, what part of California? 45. So where'd the time go? That's what I want to know. <laughs> what, what part of California? I was born in Anaheim, and then I grew up in Cerritos, which is uh, sort of by Knott's Berry Farm for a landmark. I got you. We're, we're me and Michaela are both in uh, California, so we get it. Uh, and the oh, tour, sweet. the tour starts in like five or six days in California. It does, yeah. So tomorrow night I fly out uh, to join my brothers in San Francisco. We're going to have a couple days of uh, rehearsal, and uh, then we're just going to hit it. That's first awesome. Date is in, so, first so, date so, at the Regency in San Francisco. So we're, we're stoked to start it there and end it in Philly. This is, so this is the, these are the only practices you get before the tour? Is that how it works? Yeah, that's how it works. But the thing is, is most of the guys in the band are constantly playing in other capacities. And so, and especially with the bulk of the rhythm section being from RX Bandits, they're just like a, a machine sort of that knows one another anyway. And so it's just really a matter of having a couple days to, to coalesce. You I got know? you. For, just to, marinate to on it, marinate on a little bit. Marinate and then like assemble the Voltron, you know, try or figure out where the tigers fit. Hell yeah. You know? When, when so. you guys, when you guys decide it's time to make another EP or album, how does that process work? When, when do you, do you contact them? You're like, boy, it's time to get together and make another, make another animals fighting album or, and then how does, how does the writing go down for that? Yeah, so that conversation that you just described has kind of started and stopped probably eight times or so. Like, it's just really informal. Like, hey, there's a pandemic. We're all at home. Let's write a record. And then it doesn't happen. You know, or like, hey, it's been a while. Let's do this. And it doesn't happen. But this time we were like, hey, first idea was we want to do some shows again. And it wasn't because we were having the post-pandemic itch or whatever uh not that we're post-pandemic but you know what i mean it was really just like you know it, it feels like it's time um but we didn't want to do yet another tour without new music considering the last new music was in 2008 so that's quite a long time uh and so um that began the process of like okay we've actually got dates on the calendar now so we kind of have to hold our feet to the fire. If we're going to want songs, we got to plot out a timeline and meet some deadlines and make it happen. And so that was like the impetus. And so the writing of for this EP was very similar to the first EP in that we're kind of all over the place and we don't really have time to stop what we're doing with our other projects and get into a garage somewhere and hash out song ideas. And so it was really piecemeal from the drums up, we had Chris Sagakis play a bunch of beats, pieced together a song out of it, and then just passed it up the chain. So, what's um, what's the end? What's the last part of the chain? The last part of the chain is the vocals. Okay, so Anthony's yeah. parts, I imagine. Yeah, for sure. for sure. And with Anthony, it's like he's been so busy between. I mean, there's probably a million projects that I haven't even heard about that. Because just today or yesterday, I saw a post he made of 
some Skrillex song or something. Did, did he collab on a Skrillex song? So it's like, he's like, oh, I can't wait for this to be out. And it, and it was a it was an ad for a Skrillex thing. And so I'm like, okay, so we've got Skrillex. We've, you know, his fairly recent thing where he did the Blues Clues soundtrack. <laughs> um, he's got a million bands putting out new music. And so like, with all of that at play, it was really difficult for him to be like, okay, I'm home from tour and I'm not book solid doing something else and I'm not with my kids because he's still got a family he's got to hang out with. And so uh, it really came down to the wire for this one. For his parts, he pretty much cranked him out the day before he had to leave for the next like three months. And wow. so it had he not been able to grind that day or find the inspiration i don't know if we'd have the ep yet it might still be in perpetual production um but i think that pressure is healthy and i think in this case it really proved to be true on in everybody's parts it's just i really feel like this is a captures perfectly the essence of all of our previous releases sort I agree. of in one little package. I agree. And the stuff that Anthony ended up doing is like his best stuff. It's like got the energy of the early stuff, but like the clarity and like lyrics and things of someone who's like matured. You know, so like there's a lot of cool stuff at, at play this time. No one's gonna comment on my like. Oh, we're, we're getting there with Skid Row. Like, we're my getting there. Four poster of Skid Row behind me. We're yes. getting there. We gotta get the good, the good, the usual <laughs> questions out of the way. But uh, Michaela, I'll let you take it away for a second, then I'll I'll hit you with some fun ones, Rich. All right. <laughs> yes. Um. Just going off the topic of inspiration. Um. That gap in between IREX Bandits and going into Sounds of Animals Fighting the first time, like what was the inspiration behind even starting Sounds of Animals Fighting in the first place for you? That's a really good question. Like it comes down to I, after years of touring in IREX Bandits, short story was I felt like, oh no, am I going to do the rock star dream and then burn out and have nothing to show for it? Or am I going to like join the rat race, get done with college, do the things I'm quote unquote supposed to do. Right. And so I took time off from RX bandits to finish college and do all those responsible things. At which point I got the itch to do music again, but I couldn't do it in the way that I used to. And so my solution was, this whole file swapping thing, which people had been doing, but it, it now it's like the norm, you know? But in 2004, it wasn't necessarily the norm to like get some drum beats and then like have the, you know, guitar player play whatever he wants over those and then build vocal melodies over that completely isolated. Um, and so, yeah, it was really just a response of like, oh, I quit the band to be responsible but that's not my dream. I want to live my dream. How can I live my dream and still finish up this college thing and everything else? And the solution was sending files over the internet and creating a band with people that I had either played with previously or met in my touring days. Do you recall what it was like when, Tiger, awesome. when Tiger and the Duke came out and the reception was just amazing? Like I remember, I remember when it came out reading blogs and they were like, this album is insane like you have to I totally it. remember that and my first thought when that happened was thank goodness because I was going to Cal State Long Beach at the time and I applied for a $10,000 student loan that I did not use for school I used it to press the CDs Good for you. of Tiger and the Duke and um, thank goodness it caught on because I was able to pay that back uh, otherwise, I don't know if I would, I would probably still have that. <laughs> this, this copy's still in the garage if you need any, guys. We'll... Yeah, dude. <laughs> that was compliments of Wells Fargo, student loan, Cal State Long Beach. So tell me, tell me what you got going on in the background. You got, you got Skid Row. I see. Got to be probably one of your favorite 80s bands, I would imagine. 
Yeah, Skid Row. I got uh, that's Bauhaus, but there's a light reflecting on it, and then the Jesus and Mary chain, and my CD collection, guarded by Taylor Swift. <laughs> Hell yeah! And then like behind me, I have all these autographed Charlie XCX, and that's Sabrina Carpenter. Yeah, yeah. She's like an up and coming. She's like love, a kind of uh, like an Ariana Grande about to pop. For sure, and Ariana Grande is <laughs> over <laughs> there. <laughs> door. So an ec- eclectic mix. You like you yeah, like you like a little sure. bit of everything. For sure. That's awesome. Hell yeah. What was it like working with Bjork on the second album? Working with what? With Bjork. Bjork. Yes. Isn't B- work. Isn't Bjork on Skullflower? Dude, that would be crazy cool if it was. So the voice you're hearing sounds like Bjork. I but always just, thought to this day that was Bjork. I'm sorry. Oh, no, no. Dude, I mean, first of all, what a cool compliment. But second of all, that would be just like life-changing, mind-blowing. And I'd probably live in Iceland right now if <laughs> I had any access to Bjork at all. But no, so that voice is its like a traditional Hindi sort of vocal line that was... Uh, sung by a uh, acquaintance that we met like during the recording we reached out to people i was really into this band they were big in the 90s for a second called corner shop and they were like uh their big radio hit was brim full of asha but anyway this band integrated a lot of like indian or middle eastern or just asian just chord progressions and vocal melodies that were like not traditional, unorthodox scales and whatnot. And I really, really wanted to integrate some sort of like Hindi or or Indian variant of vocal somehow. I was also into that hardcore band Shelter who did a lot of samples of that sort too. And so we found uh, someone to sing it. And man, I wish I knew where she was um it'd be cool to reconnect or have her come on stage with her but yeah dude first of all you're the first person that's ever made like a stylistic connection to bjork and so i take that as a compliment but yeah that would be i don't know we'd probably have we'd probably have platinum status (laughs) if that was rob balling rich balling is balling at that point i I hear you (laughs) hell yeah uh, what song would you say of of all the animals fighting tracks are are you most proud of and why? Hundred percent the new EP, and not just because it's new. Um, and I know a lot of artists just get excited about their new material, and they kind of have blinders on about it because even if the fans are like, "Oh, that's terrible," they think it's their best stuff yet. But I do really think, and I think there was just something in the water. So there was like a just the right mixture of pressure and and maturity and different things at play that just like resulted in a very balanced, very good representation of where this band has come from and sort of where we are in our abilities now. Because it's just much more like it's got the spirit of of that we've always had, but like much more of like a mature songwriter approach to what's going on. So I'm very proud of the EP. And then aside from the new EP, you know, just that original EP tiger and the Duke has really resonated with people. Um, So it's cool that that just like lives on, even though it was done on a school loan and so, you know, half, half the lyrics are like made up, you know, I saw you guys live. It was well over 12 years ago at the Glass House. And oh, yeah. Do you remember I, that particular show? But uh, I remember yeah. it being so artistic with with the way everyone in the robes walks up on stage and everyone, like, there's, like, painters painting on the stage. It's For sure. How? how I mean. I do. That I, was 2006, and that was right after that tour I moved to, to Texas. In fact, like, I signed the like mortgage papers or whatever you call it for the house I moved into in Dallas in a parking lot in Las Vegas on that tour. So it was like, 
that was a pivotal tour. Hell yeah, very cool. But it, it, can you explain how how poetry is so impactful, not only in your life, but how it affects the music that you create? Because I, I was kind of doing a little bit of research for this, and it it appears like you you've damn near got a master's in poetry. Yeah, I have I have a, a bachelor's in English, and my master's is in education. But um, I do I like poetry a lot. I spent some time in that uh, that pot that window of time that Michaela referenced earlier, like the after our expanded, but before the Sound of Animals fighting, when I was working in Hot Topic and realized that like they had pins and buttons and patches and shirts and everything music, but I didn't see a book. And so like I initiated this like, hey, let me tap my network of uh, musicians that I had toured with for so many years and see if they'll write me a poem or lyrics on a, even a napkin at a Denny's. And, and I compiled that into two volumes called Revolution on Canvas that I'm pretty proud of. But just that and I love um minimalism and i love just like sparse language i love there's nothing more satisfying than like when you can read a piece of language that says like so much in just a few very concrete words and so i admire that about poetry and i see all of the um correlations between poetry and and music lyrics and song and so it's just always been like really interesting to me to like think of songs as poems and yeah, that's cool. poetry's always been. And then my early years, when I was even more pretentious than I am now, uh, I would, you know, dabble in poetry just to look cool. But hell yeah, uh, Michaela, what's another question you have for Rich? Um, favorite moment personally um, for your whole career thus far. Like a highlight moment. That's a hard one. Yeah, that's a really hard one. Um, well, I hope tonight at midnight when I get an update on ticket sales for this current tour, that's my moment. Because uh, yes, it's been a it's been a little on the slow side. Uh, the the entire world has changed after you know COVID. It's like everyone waits till pretty much the day of <laughs> to decide they're doing anything. So you never know like how well a show is going to do uh, in advance until like the week of the show. So with the holidays and everything, we haven't really seen if there's been an uptick. Uh, hopefully there has. Um, I think that the shows are going to do really well when it's all said and done. Um, but it has been a little bit strange compared to before, but that aside, um, Man, I think like that first tour you described earlier, BG, of this like 2006, we had two painters on stage at the same time. We had dancers. Uh, I broke my foot on the in the first show of that tour because I did this flying oh kick and my foot hit one of the dancers' heads. Uh, and like I busted. So I ended up walking with a cane for the rest of that tour. But um that tour was incredible and so and that just really set in motion like hey this is a really cool band that i'm able to do while finishing college and sort of you know defy all of those conventional things for myself that i thought i had to throw in the towel but here we are on this tour doing more interesting and exciting things than ever before so that was a big highlight Rich, is there is there an artist that you've reached out to in the past that maybe sent you a track to be a feature on on something for Animals Fighting? It just didn't work out, or or same same style of question, but they just weren't available at the time that you're willing to let us know who who that artist was. Yeah, no, I, nobody for this project has ever said no, but we also haven't reached out to like an insane amount of people. It's just been like a couple, a couple people. Um, that's a really good question though, because I know that the reverse has happened where like I've reached out to them 
and maybe we haven't heard back. I'm I'm trying to think of who it, who would have been. Like I'm wondering if you if you ever reached out to for, to Craig Owens to get on Lover or or Ape Shit or anything else, and and he just said no because he's only uh, on Tiger and the Duke, correct? No, so he's on. He's actually on Lover. So like. His the very first song is an a cappella song, really high vocal. That's him, and then he he sings on a song called um, "Horses in the Sky." Um, that's him, and so those two songs. There's an a cappella, and then there's another song. The voice on Tiger that's not Anthony, and that's not me. That's like really high. Um, Honestly, I don't. He was a friend of someone's, and I can't remember what band he was from. But it was no, it wasn't a band that like you would recognize. But with Craig, we just did that one uh, album, um, those features on that album, and we never did anything else with him. Um, he's awesome. I haven't talked to him in years. I tried texting him a couple times, but didn't hear a response. So I don't know if I even have his right number or what. Um, but I think what happened there was, uh, you know, he hit his own path of popularity. And so, you know, once that happened, people were constantly asking, hey, is he going to be on it again? Is he going to be on again? Assuming that, you know, he just came with the territory when it was just like, you know, cool moment featured vocals on that second, <coughs> excuse me, second album. However, in the future, it'd be great to have him back on something for sure. It's, um, it's kind of hard to tell. With them sooner than later. It's hard to tell because there is a lot of mystery involved in the band. Like, it's not bluntly obvious this featuring this artist, this artist, like per track. It's yeah. kind of like you got to be in the know and, and discover. And that's one of the things, like, especially when you guys first came out with all the masks, we didn't even know who the whole lineup was for a while. Obviously, sure. Anthony's voice stood out. We knew that was him, but then we kind of had to do some Sherlock Holmes to figure out who the band was at the time. For sure, and that was all intentional, of course. And like a lot of it at the very beginning was because some people that were involved were still like under weird contracts for this and that. So we were just like, let's just do anonymity feeds the whole idea that we can do whatever the heck we want because there's nothing to lose, no reputations at stake or whatever. And then over time, we still like play coy with it. We still like to keep the mystery. The ape shit liner notes just lists animal names um, and not exactly who is what or does what. So we still um, sort of blur the line. Um, but but we also realize at some point the cat's out of the bag about most of the people that are uh, returning over and over again, especially if you've seen us live and we're not necessarily like slipknot where we're performing in disguises and so there just came a point after like the third tour where we're just like who cares and so the <laughs> all the tour info for all the ad mat for this tour is just us hanging out because who cares in 2019 though even we are all the advertisements were still uh masks so hell yeah well, Rich, we know you're busy. We just got a couple more for you. We'll let you go. Michaela, sure. what would be uh, your final question for Rich? Um, I'm just curious uh, if you can name any musicians or artists that you are currently digging on, like in your free time. Yeah, dude. Um, let's see. There's uh, Holy Fawn from Arizona. I'm really into. They're like sort of a black metal shoegaze hybrid but it's it's just really pretty um but noisy and and cool i vibe on that uh block party i vibe on i still just love all the you know kim petrus and charlie xcx and pedal supply and the whole pc music thing is really fun all the poppy stuff is really fun um I'm just like constantly listening to music. So uh, whether it's revisiting old stuff or, you know, trying to find something new and obscure, I really, really like 
that band Tidal Fight. I know that they've sort of been inactive for a while. That's actually one person, um, either vocalist from that band, I would love to do something with. I have no idea how to, to get a hold of them, though. Instagram doesn't always render a response. <laughs> so It's true. And it's just like that's the only place to find some people now at this point. So if they don't check DMs or if the DMs go into, like, the vaults, you just never get a hold of anybody. Yeah, we've been there before. Uh... I miss MySpace, <laughs> dude. Let me tell you, so many yes, great things too. about MySpace. I miss being able it's to really passive – passive aggressively pick who my top people are you know what i mean and like trade them out when it was time to trade them out and like <laughs> adding a song to your profile and just like i reached out to so many bands because like the idea of just like all of that world was so new that people were checking dms it was like not a thing but now it's just everybody everybody's just you know you get, yeah, so. we know what you mean. Uh, Rich, my final question for you, sir, is one that I ask just about everybody that we have on the show. Uh, what is what is a piece of musical advice that somebody's given you at some point in your career that just kind of made you just take a step back and be like, wow, that is great advice? Or a terrible mistake you made, either in RX, Pyramids, Animals Fighting, whatever, that you don't want a starting up band that may see this interview to make? Well, first, I appreciate the opportunity to visit with you guys. Thank you. Uh, very cool. Um, there's a J. Cole lyric that goes, <clears throat> play the game to change the game. And I've noticed, like, I don't know, we could go around and around about this, whether it's, like, an issue of maturity or or whether or not you're weak if you give in to the man or whatever, but it's like sometimes you got to play the game if you want to get the platform to make a change, right? And I think that that transfers to almost any concept, whether it's musical or just at your job or whatever. You're going to be asked to do things that maybe you don't want to do, right? Or maybe you're like anti-corporation punk rock band, right? But you also have no money for instruments, and Marshall wants to sponsor you, right? And the trade-off is you got to use a Marshall amp that has the Marshall logo on it because they gave you a free amp. Now you got to use something with their logo on it. So you could either say F the man and just retreat into your room with no amplifier at all and be a crusty punk that's living his, you know, you know, glory, you know, or you can play the game get that amplifier, use it to make great music, use it to build a following, get to another level, and then once you're there, throw paint on fur, burn the corporations, do all the things, because now you're at a place where you can do that. And so that's what that quote means to me, and I apply it all across the board in my life. J. Cole, play the game to change the game. I love it. I love it. He's actually my love second it. favorite rapper behind, behind Nas. Nas is my favorite rapper, yeah. personally, but... Rich, this is awesome, man. I appreciate you taking sure. some time out of your day. Hopefully, whatever, like, oh, the ticket sales that come in at midnight are glorious yeah. and uh, sold out everywhere. That'd be awesome. Stay safe on the road. No no, no flying kicks this round, hopefully. And sure. uh, <laughs> you're awesome, bro. Man, Thank you so much. we see you all out there. If you want to, you know, just, you know how to email me. So if you want to come out to the show, just let me know. Dude, I, I may take up on that opportunity. I appreciate it. So Will turns the first one, right? Yeah, so first San Francisco, but then, yeah, in Southern California, it's Wiltern, Anaheim, House of Blues, and then San Diego. Hell yeah, and we'll we'll fade out jamming some ape shit <laughs> off the new EP, Ape Shit, from Sounds of Animals Fighting. Ladies and gentlemen, Rich Ballin! Give me a hell yeah! Yes. Thank you, brother. Thank you. I'll talk to you later. Thank you so much. Stay safe. Thanks for having me, please.